Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Thayre Bagga and today I'll be playing the final blitz on Lee Chess and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before I start with the game I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start the game and see how it goes. Got the white pieces. I'll play the London system setup. Starts with d4, bishop f4. Trying to develop the dark square bishop early. Nice idea always. Eyeing the diagonal towards the c7. Play pawn forward, develop the knight, develop the bishop over to d3. Pawn comes on c3 and queen then comes over to c2. That's the standard structure in London. And you can fall against any kind of an opening by the opponent. Uh, and you can change the move order slightly. Doesn't matter. Because um, your, op your pieces will eventually lie on the right squares. I'll develop the knight here first so that once I move my queen over to c2, uh, I don't spoil the pawn structure there. I'm the right diagonal now. Open is preparing to cast on the queen side. Looks more slightly. And how can we punish if we can? Let's begin with the attack, I would say. Pawn forward. Tempting him to play pawn forward uh, over to a5. If that happens, we acquire the b5 with the bishop. If that doesn't happen, we can always proceed with the pawn. See uh, the advantages. Always pushing ahead. Uh, now there's one more thing we can do, which is just play bishop here, asking to exchange, which will never happen. And that means we have created a good square for the knight. Eventually, also the bishop is eyeing the diagonal. So you can take advantage of that. I'll go ahead with the knight first. So that my open does take. If he doesn't, I am going here. I'll take now with the bishop, eyeing this beautiful diagonal towards the king as well. And what next? You can play pawn forward and break open the center is one way of doing it. The other way can be this, this, and then take on this. Oh, this looks nice to me. Let's go with the knight. Even if he just tries to move the queen and take the knight with the bishop, I get to have good center pawns. See, that's what's happening in the game now. So that is okay. Maybe I can just wait for him to probably destroy himself further. And play pawn forward, making sure the knight doesn't hop in here, trying to take on the bishop. So knight comes there and we have a good retrieval square for the bishop as well which will always remain active attacking the king for a good checkmate because queen is already lined up. Okay, so opponent is trying to have some counterplay there. Uh, but does it help? Let's go with the knight. Let's, let's break open things from here. I'll take, he gets to have extra pawn. But how useful is the question? Um, Let's not sack everything in one go. I'll play pawn forward first. Bishop goes back, trying to exchange. I can exchange here. No worries. Uh, I can still cast on the queen side. It doesn't harm me at all. Let's do it. I can put my king up as well, just in case there are some tactics involved with queen and everything lining up which is not happening right away at least. Okay, pawn forward, I take, he gives a check. That's okay. Takes with the queen mostly, yes, and I go up. This is guarded already with the queen, so he can double up. Yep, and I can get my rook active, which defends, which attacks the queen eventually. Okay, asking me to take, I let him take. And I can take with the queen. That is one way of dealing with stuff. 
Oh, there is one small problem though. Now it's attacking the g2 as well with the bishop. So I'll first kick this queen away from here maybe. If he takes, I can simply just go here as well. The queen goes back, finally. I can try and exchange bishops of the board because queen takes works. That gives me a check, but doesn't bother me because I can simply put my king over here and defend everything. Even on the light square is better. Everything is in control. Yes, my opponent has two extra pawns. Can probably gain something else as well out of this position, but I still feel confident here. Two pawns down, usually don't feel confident, but I don't know. I'm feeling right about this game. Can take, can take. Anything can happen. Let's see what my opponent does here. This can be a critical move. Of course, this pawn can be taken. Eventually. I have to take here. Pawn forward doesn't make sense because I get to take. I can take this as well just in case he moves the queen away from here. Because right now the queen is guarding that square. Once I take the rook, uh, then I can give a check and probably take a pawn as well. That's what is fearing him already. And if the opponent is feeling the fear, why not make him a bit more fearful? Because next is a check, which he takes back. Okay, with the pawn. I get to take another pawn there. Or I should give a check. He then sidesteps. And then I take... No, let's take the pawn. Uh, hoping to take another. Now I can't take the other one. What I can do is give a check. Get my queen active. Let me take give another check. Take the pawn. That would be the equalizer. Just in case. Or I can just push my pawn ahead. Now opponent can try and go here is one way. Oh, he tries to exchange the queens of the board. That's also nice for me, I would say because I can take this and go towards the center. And of course he cannot win that pawn because I have a key and the rook as well. Let's go in the center, trying to take the pawn next, which he has to defend. Guess what? There are more pawns with me right now. So ah, the advantage of extra pawns. Okay, thanks for allowing me to play pawn forward. You can give a check. I can lose another pawn. But how are you saving yourself from the queen? If you have to, you have to go back and sack away the rook. Then I have a rook. Oh, he doesn't bother. Thank you. Here comes the queen and here comes the rook. And here comes your life. <laughs> okay, let's take this. Let's go here. I should have gone down maybe. Okay, let's go here. Uh, okay, he's playing on time. I forgot that. It's a time game. Well, that's okay. I can take this to begin with. And I can come down. And I can come down. And that's a checkmate. Thank you so much. 
I said I was feeling right about this game and sometimes you feel right and that's how it proves out to be eventually. So uh, that was a comfortable victory at the end. But let's see how I changed it around because I was two pawns down. So here's what the computer analysis looks like. Starts off at d4, e6, bishop f4, pawn to d6 there by the opponent, uh, e3. Uh, h6 is passive in the opening, I would say, and so is a6. But both are uh, actually just to prevent the bishops from acquiring uh, g5 and b5 respectively. Then again, b6. He's just trying to move some random pawns, I felt, for a moment. And here I just stood up the knight, trying to connect both of them, making sure that the pawn structure doesn't get spoiled. Otherwise, say I move something else. For example, my original plan was queen here. Or we can take this and then suddenly I have to take back. And yeah, it's a it's a decent pawn structure. I can say it can work in my favorite advantage as well once the rook gets active. And then it's a mandate that I cast on the queen side or not castle, but castling on the king side would be bad. So uh, instead of the game, I just develop the knight first. Open develops his knight. I go with queen over to c2. Uh, black has decent advantage here. Uh, actually, white has now after queen e7. He could have just moved ahead with the pawn, but doesn't. And then I just uh, understand that he's trying to cast on the queen side. So I played uh, a4 there. Open being brave enough, I would say, or I don't know, mad enough. Still castle on that side of the board. I played pawn forward. Then he had to play pawn forward. That was forcing. I went with bishop on over to e4, trying to exchange or just open up the structure in a way that can be advantage just to me, uh, uh, which was kind of an okay move, not the best one. And then after he plays pawn forward, I get the bishop back. And now f5 by the opponent, which means I can go ahead it, over to e5. Opponent does take back, and I take back with the bishop. Knight comes out over to f6. My knight goes now to b3, trying to acquire the right square, which was c5 next. Now queen side steps the harm's way. The pawn forward, he attacks the bishop. I guess I can play uh, f4 or bring the bishop back. I preferred bishop over to h2. The right move again uh, now g5 by the opponent i went ahead with the knight which was not the right move because i'm letting a pawn lose as well i should have castled right away which i did later on the opponent takes and then i play pawn forward and then offers bishop exchange i have to now and then i castle so it's three uh close to three in favor of black here uh and then some counterplay, just moving the king up, uh, trying to defend the pawn. And then I rightly saw this because this can be very temptatious uh, that I take the pawn and then open can take this, open can take this, take this with the rook. Here's thousands of options. And this would be the strongest because then I have to move the rook. And as soon as I do that, queens will be off the board very soon. And once the queens are off the board, I'm most likely to lose from here because my opponent has more pawns. But instead of the game, I want to keep my pawns on the board. So I just played pawn g3, trying to move the queen backwards, which does happen. Then I just try to exchange the bishops of the board because the bishop was one of the defenders of the, uh, of the king. So I need to remove the defenders because already the pawn structure was weak over here. To exploit that weakness, I have to move this bishop out of the way. That's what I do. I try to exchange the bishops. Opponent takes a pawn. Yes, that's free. I can save my king. I went on the light square. Opponent takes here and I take back with the queen, which gives me advantage. The advantage was this diagonal, this which can be exploited eventually and taking on the pawn as well. Here my opponent plays, doubles up the rook and suddenly see uh, the advantage is now in white's favor. It has become uh, from minus 2.7 to plus 0.9. Here I give a check. He goes up. I take on the rook. He takes back with the pawn. And then I have to give another check. But I take on the pawn here, trying to grab another eventually. Opponent tries to save with queen e5. I give a check. The right move, pushing the king away. Then another check, trying to get my queen active as well. I can take a pawn next. Opponent tries to get the rook in between. 
Now I can get my rook over to c5, but I tried to push the pawn forward. And I was explaining in the game that this can be a nice move because once the queen comes here, uh, it's threatening a couple of things. A, uh, the rook. B, a quick checkmate kind of a attack because once the queen comes here, see, I just misplaced it. That's the checkmate. So I have to be aware of that. So I was thinking what would be my next move once my opponent places queen over to e2. And then I think the best move was to get the rook over to b5. And still I can get a... Uh, and then probably the opponent can play here. And in this case, I would have to exchange uh, mostly the queens of the board. And if... No, actually it's not a queen exchange as well. I lose the rook if I don't move it. So this could have been tricky. I would have... Might have missed this move. Maybe uh, it could have turned the game around. Because after pawn forward, that's a check. I have to get the queen in between. And then some exchange happens. Open can defend the pawn, and then we can exchange more stuff here. And this game can, it looks like a draw if both the players play perfectly fine from here. Uh, could have been a complicated decision, but here my open exchange is the queen, which was surprising, and that was at best losing because after he takes, he has a set of double pawns, which are never going to be promoted. I'll take the c pawn next, which does happen. And he cannot defend this pawn as well because I have a rook which will defend. And once I defend that, which does happen, I go towards the center. Even the king has to stay, stand here so that it doesn't let my king take these center pawns and walk towards uh, the opponent's rook. So the opponent had to place his king here. And straight away I understand that, okay, I have three pawns here on the queen side. Uh, and a couple of them uh, are actually with the opponent, so I can actually push pawns forward. That's what I do. I played f4 straight away, opponent has to take, and I have a passer now, which is the f pawn, which would be tough to maintain. And as soon as I saw that, I just push the pawn forward. Now my opponent can take the pawn, which does happen. I attack the rook. Rook can go back or do whatever, but I will be having queen on the board. Yes, if rook goes back, that's the best possible move right now. I get the queen, he has to take. And once he does take, I get my rook. And if you see the situation, it's closed from here. The opponent cannot walk through here. Has to go backwards or just stay there as for as long as possible. But as soon as, say, a random move and I go here, the pawn is uh, just solely dependent, defended with the king. All I need to do is march my rook over there, take a pawn, maybe if move forward, I can take this one. I can take this one eventually and I'll have a couple of pawns or I don't even need to promote. I can just checkmate with the rook and the king. So that was completely winning once uh, my my pawn was unstoppable from there. In fact, once uh, the opponent decided to exchange queens and just keep center double pawns. So it's an important thing when to trade and when not to trade. And that's what the lesson is uh, in this chess video. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. Give a thumbs up to the video as well. That gives me motivation to make these on a daily basis. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.